I'm Paul uh, Simmons, one half of Timorous Beasties. Um, we design, print, um, fabrics, wallpapers, um, and a lot of products for the interior market. There's a generic look about a lot of the things that we do. We tend to work at a very large scale, and also we use a lot of different methods of production, from hand printed right through to digital, all sorts of different techniques. And we see everything through from, as I say, from production right through how it ends up in the shop. People have got to feel good when they when they walk in, and um, obviously the, the, the qualities of the shop have got to re reflect the, the qualities of the, the product as well. What is nice with uh, having our own uh, retail experience as such uh, is that we can do what we want. And quite often you'll go into showrooms and we'll just have small samples of fabrics um, usually just uh, lined up on rails. What is nice about our retail spaces is that we can put huge big lengths uh, with the height and people can pull them out and look at the full width and really get a feel for the material. If you have presence on the high street, every product that you decide on putting out there has a place to go and you're not at the mercy of trying to meet up with a buyer. You can go straight from uh, studio uh, and it has a home to go to. In the past you had to invest quite a lot into production but there's various digital techniques that means that you can produce small quantities, we can test the market from the shop, we also get a feel of what people's reaction is um, to some of the work. The way that we started was slightly unusual. We really felt there was a market for a lot of the designs that we were producing but we couldn't really find anyone to take us on. Um, and the only solution that we could come up with was to produce our own uh, work ourselves. Our designs and I guess our ethos is different because we don't have anyone to answer to. We can design and produce whatever we want. We can spend even a couple of years working on something. I think that it's a kind of challenge for us to use imagery that isn't often used in textiles and to make it seductive and beautiful and textile-like. Textiles as a medium uh, is, is something that's very, um, people can be it's easily to shock. But at the same time, it's quite interesting to challenge things. Sometimes it's more um, valid, I think, to do that than just to do something for a purely commercial uh, reason. When we've done things that are, you know, a bit risque, it's actually worked in our favour. Quite often, you know, sometimes I think, oh well, you know, uh, people aren't going to want it uh, or live with it, um, but it's a nice idea. Quite often those designs have actually, um, in an indirect way, um, either made us money, but there's lots of other gains in terms of um, credibility, uh, PR, um, and a whole bunch of other factors, as I say, that are much more indirect. Toiles are a generic term for a type of textile produced in France, often with bucolic scenes, often with sort of islands of things that are happening that are placed um, over a textile. There was a lot of historic um, moments or events that were depicted in toiles, like the first Montgolfier hot air, air balloon launch, um, right up to the American Civil Wars, um, right up to actually there was some textile trade wars between, I think, uh, India and Britain um, and France that were depicted in toiles as well. So they, they, they kind of, you know, you get all sorts of toiles for all sorts of different events. They're stories. And so, you know, us putting a junkie in the Glasgow toile I don't think was really that subversive when you compare it to the things that were going on in, 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 in the twelves of, of you know, French twelves around about the time of the French Revolution. So with silkscreen, you have to have a separation for each colour. Each one of those separations is put onto a screen. Depending on the design, you'll be printing either an opaque ink or maybe a transparent ink or a varnish or whatever is in your actual design. Now that process does take quite a long time because between each printed colour it has to dry and you get a build up of textures and, and inks and you can physically feel it quite often on the actual wallpaper or, or fabric. 
Digital printing, which has improved vastly over the years, is a lot flatter. If you just imagine printing out something on your computer, it's exactly the same kind of process, but everything's a lot bigger. We design for production, and that's a very important part of the design process, is that you've got to think about how it's going to be produced. What we try and do is mix some of the technologies together. So we might have a, a, a digital print, and then on top of that we may well bring the print back to the studio and hand print on top of that. Our fabrics and wallpapers are quite expensive. But, I mean, the simple reason for that is that there's a lot of time spent on them. Some of our designs we can only physically produce um, four rolls a day. And even though you know, people are sometimes shocked at the prices uh, of our wallpapers, the profit on them is actually quite small, or certainly less than, than some you know, roller-printed or mass-produced things. We have a, a, a huge um, spectrum of, of people that do buy our work, from lords and ladies to... Um, uh, we have, you know, we've had a few letters from prisoners wanting samples in, you know, for their prison cells. Um, so, I mean, it's a, it's, we cover a broad spectrum. Um, but I also like to think that, uh, you know, we, we design um, things that maybe people weren't expecting to like. Um, and I think, you know, when you ask someone what they do like in terms of textiles or music or books or anything like that, the only reference that they do have is something that they already know. And I, I, I think that, you know, what we try and do is to give something to people that they never realised that they wanted.